Hey there, what is going on? This is Rob from PanthraVision. Today I'm going to show you how to warp text in Photoshop. This is a really annoying uh, kind of process because you kind of see it in, in Adobe Illustrator. You can warp it, you can warp it in Photoshop, but at the end of the day, none of them are going to bring the right results. The right results, a 3D software is going to bring the best results. This, this is some approach like how you can make it kind of realistic to do, you know. In so anyways, let's jump in. But before we do that, if you're new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified with updates. Alrighty then. So first thing, click the text, which is located right here, or just press the letter T and click. Uh, select a color as you can see here up here you can select the color click on it I gotta go with a black right now and I gonna of course I'm gonna rename this sky high there you go which uh, I had before I gotta go with drock drock it had a really tall font right here this is too tall drock con web super press and hold control T Press and hold shift, scale it up. So as you can see, it's too tight between the letters. I'm gonna go with the distance between, between the letters. So if you have like too much dis distance going on between the letters, you also can, uh, you know, narrow down the distance by going here and going like minus 25 or something like that. I'm gonna right click on the text, rasterize type. There you go. So now we have, we can't ba we can't basically edit the type right now. So I gonna also duplicate this layer. So I have the original layer. So from here we're gonna press Control R. As you can see, the ruler is going to appear right here and uh, down there. I just need to put this here. There, there you go. So I'm gonna drag this where it gonna distort. So I'm gonna distort somewhere around here first so I'm gonna drag the ruler here I can press ctrl T and I won't create like a straight distortion so I want to make it more dynamic and I want to make it like this for example distorted this way so I'm gonna twist it a little double click so it's gonna remain like that ctrl T again right click click on warp and right click again and split warp horizontally there you go, and it's gonna create these lines, as you can see, and I'm gonna bring the first line where the ruler is, right click, split, warp horizontally again. <clears throat> Second is gonna go here, or uh, somewhere around here. The problem is that this S doesn't like that much these kind of distortions. It won't look that good, but we're gonna insist on it anyways. So this, the third one gonna go here. And from here, I'm gonna remove the ruler. And I'm gonna play around, let's see. So, here as you can see, these are the anchor points. I'm gonna press and hold shift and select this anchor point here and drag it all around this anchor point, the second one, which basically ends on the right. So, from here, I'm gonna select this uh, line and just distort it. Okay, so this distortion is something like this. Uh, I also can distort it like separately. I'm gonna press on this anchor point, like pull this upwards. So it, here in this part is like more space and this area is like it's more narrow. I can pull this down also. There you go, something like this. Actually, I'm gonna... So this process is pretty complicated. As you can see, if I try to pull this handle downwards, you're gonna bend it in all kind of ways, which is not that good, but look at that. Okay, this is pretty good. This is okay. I gonna press enter. I gonna press control T. And now I'm gonna select the ruler again and Okay, so it looks like this. I'm gonna press enter and from here I'm gonna press ctrl T and rotate it. I also can just bring the ruler here so I can check where you're gonna fit well. I'm gonna press OK. I mean enter. Remove the ruler. Okay, so I created a new layer so I can gonna remain with the original one as well. 
I'm gonna double click on this layer. I'm gonna go to the color overlay and select a gray color. As you can see here, if I'm gonna drag this down here, this thing, thingy, can make it more light or more dark. I'm gonna go with this kind of gray. Click OK, click OK. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna press and hold Shift and also select the sky high text which basically was modified so we got this empty layer and this one I'm gonna right click and merge layers so we got a unedit uneditable layer which doesn't contain any effects okay I also gonna create a new layer and uh, make it black select the paint bucket tool which is located right here click wherever you want so the background is going to be black i gotta go back where the gray layer is i mean the gray text and from here i'm thinking to go with this first with the polygonal lasso tool and where they cut because as you can see here it's basically cut off because it's curves inside so it, it creates that effect so i'm gonna go and select it from here I gonna you need to be really careful you know to make you know to apply this effect correctly but with a lot of practice you're gonna get this right okay so we made this line and I'm gonna go down here click on here and connect it here okay so we need to darken this area so i'm gonna make shadows on it i'm gonna create a new layer i'm gonna select the brush i won't go with the dodge or burn because uh, i'm gonna use that uh, in a different section i'm gonna scale this up a little the brush size and just you need to make a shadow which is strong in this point and it's gonna fade away i think this is good I'm gonna press Ctrl D, so it's gonna deselect that area. And uh, from here, I'm gonna decrease the opacity, which is located right here. You need to know how much opacity is good. You know, you can test it out. I'm gonna create a new copy of this. I'm gonna drag it where the little plus is. So as you can see, it creates this. And from here, I'm gonna, let me check. I'm gonna select the eraser, why not? Scale this down and i'm gonna deselect the shadow which is under i'm gonna, gonna go back to the new shadow i and i'm gonna of course press here then press and hold shift and click on here see that and it made a line it basically deleted that way i'm gonna check this again so this area is gonna be stronger check it out if i uncheck it see that so it makes it more realistic so i also can manipulate it by increasing or decreasing the opacity so anyways i'm gonna go back to the original layer go to the dodge tool okay dodge tool range mid tone so we're gonna work on the mid tone so these are the mid tones i'm gonna scale this a little bit i mean this is pretty good and do the same thing uh click here where it's nothing press and hold shift and click also here and you can do the same thing or you also can select your graphic tablet and make some magic with that and this is how you work it out basically you also can put some more shadows in there I'm gonna select the burn tool in this case so we're at the highlight the same thing we're gonna select the mid-tone exposure I don't know 40 50 something like how it was in the default i'm gonna increase the brush size gonna make this area a little bit darker there you go and i'm gonna work it out the bottom part also so we're gonna speed this up okay so as i can see here this place is like really harsh uh, I mean uh, it's not natural so this is the thing you need to figure out the solution how to make these natural I mean the bending part because this is too straight uh, the curvature is different 
I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, so this is the shadow right here. This is the layer with the shadow. I'm gonna create the mask on it. I'm gonna select the black, the brush, select the brush, make sure you're on the black. If you have these kind of areas, then uh, you correct those eventually. I'm gonna go do the same thing with the, look at that, so interesting. I don't know what to say. Yeah, so this thing needs uh, more practice. You need, you know, test it out a little more. So this is the stuff with these. It's a little complicated, but uh, eventually you can get it right. I'm gonna uncheck this too. Yeah, so this way it's even better if uh, it's not that harsh. Like this one. <clears throat> I'm gonna test it out a little more. Perfect, check this out. I think it came out perfect. I don't know what to say. I kind of like it. So this is the problem that uh, you need to paint everything from scratch and it's kind of annoying. I still need to put the dodge on it. A little bit of dodge, gonna scale this down and I think I'm gonna put it right here. Click, press and hold shift, click, boom, there you go. That's it. So I think this part came out the best. I don't know. You can perfect it however you want. You can uh, correct it. But uh, again, it won't look the same as if you're working in 3D from the beginning. Because if you're working in a 3D software, that is going to look way better. And you won't complicate yourself like this. And yeah. So yeah, this is kind of it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the not notification bell so you get notified with updates. And also check out the other videos as well. Have a great day. Bye-bye.